And welcome back everyone, welcome back to It Moves. Let's continue on with this disturbing game. The door is firmly shut. Oh god, this place looks amazing actually. I want this in my house. A banner on a long pole. It's too old and torn to make out any details. What about this Satan skull? A huge skull. Very, very demon-like. A banner on a long pole. Too worn out. Can I pick anything in this game? Or is it just the experience? And the little puzzles. Oh, shit. Firmly shut. I am sensing, um, a little bit of a pattern. Uh-oh. Okay, now the skull is activating. That's terrifying. It's activating it even more. Oh god, it's gonna be a rave party. Keep going, kid. Keep going. Oh, I can run! Fuck. That's not good. It's never a good sign when the game gives you the option of using the run. Run 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 Shit. Ah, oh, that looks great. Wonderful. Some kind of altar. Some kind of altar. Some kind of rave stick, party glow stick. Ah, oh, this place looks lovely. It looks like another fucking labyrinth. A, a picture of some kind of green landscape. The picture is in too bad shape to make out any details. And I can run, great. This lo this place looks even bigger than the last one. Oh, these are bars. Okay, so I have to open that somehow. And this. A large fan circulating the stuffy air. What's that noise? Some kind of machine. It looks terrifying, and what is that noise? Okay, let's go the other way. Large fan. And this way is shut. About here. Looks like something used to pour out of these. It looks very much like jam. Another large fan, and another closed off area. Everything seems to be closed off. Hmm. Large fan, back to the altar. Man, this kid sure has some demonic dreams. Oh. Hello. Hi, friend. Something used to pour out of these grit. Awesome. I keep imagining that something keeps moving out of the corner of my eye. This game, it does things to your mind. Make you imagine things that aren't really there. What's here? Looks almost like lights on the runway at airports. Yeah, that's very true. Do they do anything? I don't think so. Am I back here? What the hell was that? Mmm, scary. But not incredibly jump scary, which I do appreciate. A lot of like these RPG horror games kind of go crazy on the jump scares. And this is more psychological scaring. With the atmosphere. The atmosphere. Okay. What else we got? Okay, that's blocked off as well. Where else can I go? The ghosty said hello to me. Hello. Okay. That lever activated something. Or opened up an area. Hello. Now I have to find what exactly the fuck it opened. Great. This is gonna be a long labyrinth. Run, kid. Run like the wind! Okay, that's closed off. It's a lot of doors to open, really. Hmm. Did it open something in here? Woo! 
God damn it. That made me uh, jump a little bit, have a little heart attack. Are you something? How are you? I'm doing great. You know, still barely alive. Okay, so that opened that. Can I go there? Oh, there's a lever. Got it. Got it, got it. What did that open? Something in here? Nope. Something down here? Nope. Nah, nope. What the hell is that? Do you see that? There's a big old figure with a big old bag on his head. I will see you later. Will you chase me? Maybe. Maybe, baby. Now, what the hell did that open? Something in here? Something really scary? For a five-year-old? Or how... Oh, it opened this. Oh, that's a nice door with a face. A creepy mask. Maybe you should take it. You might uh, fit in. Okay, that opens something else. Great. What the fuck is going on? This really brings back memories, and the mask is right there, waiting for me. Will it kill me? Maybe. No, I just stepped on its face. You stay there, mask. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, what did that open? It opened this, maybe? Oh, great. Now it's like rivers of blood. Red liquid everywhere. Awesome. Well, it really brightens up the place a little bit, I think. Hello. I've been here. You know, out of the, all the rooms, I feel the safest in the pentagram. Really. Okay. I think I've been here. I've been here. Still chilling, dude? Nice. Oh, look at this room. Isn't this lovely? Look at that pile of corpses. It's very unnerving. Ooh, whoa. You okay? Chill. It's very unnerving that with each lever that we press, this place gets more and more terrifying. Which is great. What else is there? Oh, this one. What is this place? Almost like the lights on the runway. Ah, this this place isn't half bad. What did that open? I'm still waiting for the room with the guy on, with the bag on his head to open. Oh, which it did. Great. He was right here, wasn't he? Frick. What did that do? Oh, he's free. Is he roaming free? Free as the wind. Nice. Uh, whoo! Whoo! Hey, dude. Hey, face. What the fuck? <laughs> this is fucked up. It brings me back to my childhood. Uh, it's like the developer read my mind. It's funny how certain words can remain hidden from your mind, no matter how blatant or obvious they are. One word came to me that night, lying there in the darkness alone, frightened, aware of a rotten change in the atmosphere. A thickening of the air as if something had displaced it. As I heard the first casual twists of the bed sheets below, the first anxious increase of my heartbeat at the realization that something was once again in the bottom bunk that word, a word which, has been, which had been sent into exile, filtered up through my consciousness, breathing free f of all repression, gasping for air, screaming, etching, and carving itself into my mind. Ghost. As this thought came to me, I noticed that my unwelcome visitor has, had ceased moving. The bedsheets lay calm and dormant, 
but they had been replaced by something far more hideous. A slow, rhythmic, rasping breath heaved and escaped from the thing below. I could imagine its chest rising and falling with each sordid, wheezing and garbled breath. I shuddered and hoped beyond all hope that it would leave without occurrence. The house lay, as it had the previous night, in a thick blanket of darkness. Silence prevailed, all but, all but for the perverted breath of my as yet unseen bunkmate. I lay there terrified. I just wanted, I just wanted to, this thing to go, to leave me alone. What did it want? Then something unmistakably chilling transpired. It moved. It moved in a way different from before. When it threw itself around in the bottom bunk, it seemed unrestrained, without purpose, almost animalistic. For that thing lying there in the darkness, that thing which seemed intent on terrorizing a young boy, calmly and nonchalantly, sat up. Its labored breathing had become louder. Now only a mattress and a few flimsy wooden slats separate, separated my body from the unearthly breath below. I lay there, my eyes filled with tears, a fear which mere words cannot relate to you or anyone else coursed through my veins. I would not have believed that this fear could have been heightened, but I was so wrong. I imagined what this thing would look like, sitting there, listening from below my mattress, hoping to catch the slightest hint that I was awake. Imagination then turned into an unnerving reality, it began to touch the wooden slats which my mattress sat on. Oh shit. It, seems to, it seemed to caress them carefully, running what I imagined to be fingers and hands across the surface of the wood. Then with great force, it brought it, it prodded angrily between two slats into the mattress. Even though the padding, it felt as though someone had viciously stuck their fingers into my side. I let out an almighty cry and the wheezing, shaking, and moving thing in the bunk below replied in kind by violently vibrating the bunk as it had done the night before. Small flakes of paint powdered onto my blanket from the wall as the frame of the bed scraped along it, backwards and forwards. Once again, I was bathed in light, and there stood my mother, loving, caring as she always was, with a comforting hug and calming words which eventually subdued my hysteria. Of course she asked what was wrong, but I could not say, I dared not say, I simply said one word over and over and over again. Nightmare. This pattern of events continued for weeks, if not months. Night after night I would awaken to the sound of rustling sheets. Each time I would scream so as to not provide this abomination with time to prod and feel for me. With each cry, the bed would shake violently, stopping with the arrival of my mother, who would spend the rest of the night in the bottom bunk, seemingly unaware of the sinister force torturing her son nightly. Along the way, I managed to feign illness a few times and come up with other less than truthful reasons for sleeping in my parents' bed. But more often than not, I would be alone for the first few hours of each night in that place. The room, where the light from outside did not sit right, alone with that thing. With time you can become des desensitized to almost anything, no matter how horrific. I had come to realize that, for wh whatever reason, this thing could not harm me when my mother was present. I'm sure the same would have been said for my father, but as loving as he was, Waking him from sleep was almost impossible. Waking me, on the other hand, was no trouble at all, thanks to the nightmares. Chapter 4. Anger Overload. That's never a good thing. Overload? No god. What awaits us this time? Yes, always save. Always save in these kind of games. Even though I don't think there is a possibility for us to die, it's still quite scary. A hook hangs from the wall. A piece of meat hangs to dry from it. 
That's uh, very effective. The painted glass depicts some religious man, I guess. The doors are locked, of course. It looks like we're in a very, very fancy place. Oh, shit. An earthquake. Earthquake? That's what I said. And sounds like all the... All hell's demons are coming after this kid. Holy shit. Religious man. Oh god. Oh. That's a scary effect. I like it. Hello. The painted glass depicts a scene from the Bible. Whoa. The sound effects are creepy. Very well constructed atmosphere. And with the... <laughs> with the lightning and everything. I believe it's a bit... Harder to pull off an RPG maker. Whoa. Now that's a huge spider on the right hand corner. I fucking hate spiders. Lovely. Well, this actually looks pretty nice. Oh, there's so many colors. Various jars with disgusting stuff inside. Yep, pretty disgusting. Although pretty colorful. It looks actually quite serene, despite where we are and the earthquakes and. Satan and demons. Another one. This place is kind of going down. Various jars. Okay, I get it. I get it. Whoa. Now that looks cool. Is it going to come alive? It's a big pool, but I'd rather not use it. Shit. That looks really, really scary. What do we have here? The spider that lives in this net is nowhere to be seen. That's because he's probably outside. Getting fat. Looks like a map. God damn it. Oh. The picture depicts a couple of men standing in front of a car. Anything else in here? Okay. What about this picture? A faded old picture. Whoa. Interesting corridor. And piece of meat. Run. Run, boy. There are strang strangled cats. Oh, God. Very interesting. It almost feels like we're playing Diablo with this kind of, like, 3D... Ah! Shit. I'm trapped. I'm trapped. Oh, God. There's nothing we can do. There's really nothing we can do. How the hell do I get out of here? Oh my god. What's going on? What's going on? Holy shit! Get me out of here! Get me out of here! Whoa. I gotta say, the developer has a creative mind. Run. They're all closing their mouths. Why? Why? Why is this happening? I think we're going into a little bit of a loop. Loop de loop. I can't go back either. Am I doing something wrong? Their mouths are closed now. Not that one. What the fuck am I supposed to do? Hmm. I feel like I ha have to do something. I'm not sure what exactly. Awesome noises. Oh my god. <laughs> what the hell am I supposed to do? I'm stuck in a loop dimension. I think I broke the game. Mm-hmm. I can't go back either. Great. Let's keep going and see if this changes. Whoa! Nope. Nope, 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 nope. No shit. That is scary. Get me out of here. Fucking hell, poor kid. Hi. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. Oh, 
My mom. Stop turning off the light. My greatest fears were realized in the winter. The days grew short, and the longer nights merely provided this wretch with more opportunities. It was a difficult time for my family. My grandmother, a wonderfully kind and gentle woman, had deteriorated greatly since the death of my, since the death of my grandfather. My mother was trying her best to keep her in the community as long as possible. However, dementia is a cruel and degenerative illness, robbing a person of their memories one day at a time. Soon she recognized none of us, and it became clear that she would need to be moved from her house to a nursing home. Before she could be moved, my grandmother had a particularly difficult few nights, and my mother decided that she would stay with her. As much as I loved my grandmother, and felt nothing but anguish at her illness. To this day, I feel guilty that my first thoughts were not of her, but of what my nightly visitor may do should it become aware of my mother's absence, her presence being the only thing which I was sure was protecting me from the full horror of this thing's reach. I rushed home from school that day and immediately wrenched, wrenched the bedsheets and mattress from the lower bunk removing all of the slats and placing an old desk, a chest, drawers, and some chairs which we kept in a cupboard where the bottom bunk used to be. I told my father I was making an office, which he found adorable, but I would be damned if I'd give that thing a place to sleep for one more night. As darkness approached, I lay there, knowing my mother was not in the house. I did not know what to do. My only impulse was to sneak into her jewelry box and take a small family crucifix, which I had seen in there before. While my family were not very religious, at that age I still believed in God and hoped that somehow this would protect me. Although fearful and anxious, while, gri while gripping the crucifix under my pillow tightly in one hand, sleep eventually came and, I, and as I drifted off to dream, I hoped that I would awaken in the morning without incidents. Unfortunately, that night was the most terrifying of all. Urban Explorer, Chapter 5 And we continue with Chapter 5 in the next episode. I really hope you like this series. It's very grim and serious and quite scarring. I'll see you in the next episode.